purpose of this video is to show you what you'll be responsible for assessing on a patient that has a chest tube or chest tubes in place. First place you're going to start is by taking a look at the provider orders and determining whether your chest tubes are to be to suction, and if so, how much suction, or if they are to be to water seal, which means no suction attached. After you've determined that, you'll go to the bedside and you'll start with your basic respiratory assessment. First of all, assessing respiratory rate. After you've assessed the respiratory rate, then you will expose the patient's chest and you will assess for symmetry, which is equal or unequal rise and fall on the left and right side of the chest, use of intercostal muscles or any accessory muscle use, abdominal muscles. Then from there, you are going to listen and you're gonna listen just like you always do with the normal lung sounds like gone over in an earlier video and then pay extra attention to listening in a couple extra spots around the chest tube site. After that, you're gonna to wanna to palpate starting at the side of the chest tubes and working your way out to see if you can feel any sub-Q emphysema. And this particular patient has an area right here that I can feel in here, crepitus from the sub-Q emphysema. So sometimes you might have a swollen area where that occurs. So then the chest tube dressing, I'm gonna examine. It is clean, it is dry, it is intact. It was last changed today, one o'clock this afternoon. And then I'm going to take a look. They've been nicely labeled for me, A and B. They are secured here to the patient been secured to the drainage system. Drainage characteristics are gonna be assessed in the tubing, not in the drainage container. So that is a straw, red, so serosanguinous fluid. And then I'm gonna go down and assess the chest tube drainage systems themselves. So I've made sure no dependent loops. I've cleared the tubing of the drainage. I'm gonna start with the dry suction system. So it's got the suction connected. How do I know it's on? The orange accordion in this window is inflated. How much suction? It's set at 20. I control that with a spin dial right here on the side. This is the water seal chamber. Any bubbling in that chamber would indicate that there's an air leak. Then I'm gonna to move to the wet system. This is the wet suction chamber. If it was connected to suction, which it is currently not, there would be bubbling in that chamber and it would be at 14 centimeters of water of suction. This also is the water seal chamber. Any bubbling in there would indicate an air leak. You would never want the suction set that it was giving that violent of a bubbling. It should be more controlled like that, a nice gentle bubbling in that chamber. And that is wet suction versus dry suction. And then at the end of the shift, you will be responsible for collecting the amount of drainage that has occurred since the prior shift. So you'll see this one had filled up and had gone over to this particular side. So if it was at the end of the shift, the nurse would be marking that at 450. Let's say it was last marked at 300 this morning at six o'clock. So then that means it would have 150 milliliters that had drained out for our shift. And that is the assessment and care of a patient with a chest tube.